The 2018 TRS Raga Racing model has some changes to the engine. I'm Jim Snell in the United States of America. Before attempting to remove the clutch cover, please watch my video entirely. There are changes to the shifting mechanism and the kickstart mechanism as well as a few other things on this engine, but this video we're concentrating on the kickstart mechanism. To remove the clutch cover, first we will drain the coolant. The bottom bolt on the water pump cover is also the drain. You must also open the cap on the top of the radiator so that air can go in as the water is draining. Taking out all the clutch cover bolts, we can arrange them by their length so that we know where they go on reassembly. The small clutch cover, when you take it off, it has the slave piston built into the back of it. There are two little parts there on that piston. The washer piece, I call the thrust washer, and then the bearing. You can see here, that's the piston. There's the bearing and the thrust washer. Later in the video, we'll talk about these more in depth, but just keep track of these parts when you take the small cover off. In the center of the clutch is a big bolt and a thick washer or bushing. Then we can take the clutch assembly out, take it off the engine, and it looks like this then at that point. You retract the kickstart pedal all the way to the foot peg, and then you can wiggle on the clutch cover and get it to come loose, pull out on it a little bit, and then you can see the pedal winds way beyond where it was originally parked. That's because there's a little tab it falls behind a ramp inside the clutch cover and that's what preloads the kickstart return spring. The kickstart shaft assembly shown here comes out complete and there are thrust washers on each end. They sometimes stick to the oil so keep track of these. Don't lose them. And I'll talk about that again later in this video. So there's no real secret to winding the kickstart spring. That's done during reassembly, which you will see later in the video. There's this finger that sticks out on the spring. And that actually tucks into a small hole drilled into the center case. When you're putting this assembly together, you just put that spring finger in that little hole there and then you just put it together. There's no winding or anything that has to be done. Now this little thumb sticking out on this gear, that rotates around and tucks behind a little ramp that's inside the clutch cover itself, which I will show later. So this little tab sticking out of the gear highlighted here is important during reassembly. So I'm going to show in detail how that works so that you understand it. So then you're looking at the side of the engine like this and you're thinking about reinstalling the clutch cover. Remember that the water pump gear, which is a composite resin, must also mesh with the gear on the front of the engine, the primary driven gear. So when you're putting the clutch cover back on, you have to manipulate the kickstart spring preload that we will discuss later. But at the same time, be sure that you rotate the gear on the water pump so it falls in place. Here we can see the ramp and thumb that separates the two kickstart gears. When the pedal is retracted to its park position, those gears are separated because that thumb falls behind that little ramp shown here. Some different views of it. So when these parts are together and that shaft is pulled around, that's what winds the kickstart return spring. So there's no winding of the spring before you put these parts together. That is done in final assembly, which I will show. That little thumb, as I show again, falls behind the ramp, opens the gears. When the bike is running, then that gear is free to spin, that kickstart idling gear. They have opposing teeth, the two gears that face each other. When they're separated, they're not engaged. 
I show here how the interior thrust washer can easily be stuck to the cases because of the oil it may stay there and then over a little bit of time gravity may pull it loose and it may drop on your workshop floor so when you take this apart get those two washers find those and make sure they're back there on your kick starting shaft assembly and I'll show here how the other one will usually be found stuck to the interior of the clutch cover. This is common. It goes right on there. I point this out in detail because you can't believe how many times people lose those washers. So when we put the kickstart shaft assembly back in the engine, as I said previously, there's no winding to the spring that's done at that point. And then when we're installing the inner clutch cover, the gasket is actually held inside the cover with two little bushings, alignment bushings. And we have to remember that when we're doing this, we have to make sure that the water pump gear is meshed with the primary driven gear. So we begin by putting the cover over the kick start shaft and just gently putting it in position. We don't try to push it on yet. We just get everything lined up. Now the next thing we're going to do is we have to rotate that shaft counterclockwise so that we wind the return spring. So we put the pedal on way forward and then we wind that pedal around with the clutch off, you don't have it running the, the gears through so you don't have a problem with the compression of the piston working against you. So as you're winding the pedal around, you wiggle and push gently on the cover and then you can see that that, has, that thumb has fallen into place. Now the cover just goes on and at the same time I was manipulating the water pump impeller so that those two gears would line up. I go ahead and I put in this back clutch cover bolt. It's the shortest one in the group. I don't tighten it at all. I just run it in just not even snug. Just keeps the parts from wa walking apart when I continue with my work. Now we will install the clutch put it back on the bike and you just kind of plug it in there and then a little bit of rotating and wiggling and you'll feel it fall into place and then of course in the center of it is that large bolt with that washer or bushing piece that bolt is hollow that's actually a vent to equalize pressure in the gearbox and clutch cover area 10 millimeter socket size. I'm running it in with a, a hand driver, but then I'm going to tighten it up with a ratchet. Now we are working against engine compression because the clutch gears are connected to the primary driven gear, and you can tighten that against that engine compression, no problem. So we're going to reinstall our clutch cover, the outer one, and the flat bearing and the thrust washer are going to be important in this next process. I'm going to quickly test my kickstart mechanism and see that it's turning the engine over and the water pump. At this point I have the spark plug out because I'm working against engine compression and it's a lot easier to do these tests with the spark plug removed. That seems to be working just fine, so we're going to put this small clutch cover on. There are four bolts of one length and one that's longer. The longest one goes there, and the other four go there, 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 and there. Being very careful that the thrust washer and the flat bearing are properly installed we will put this cover back on. These ten fingers must be in alignment 
at this point it might be better if you laid the bike on its side some people prefer that because then gravity holds the ten fingers down or you can just be very careful you place the, the flat bearing first onto the slave piston and then the thrust washer it actually has one side that's machined which you can clearly see I show here the machine side the machine side goes toward the bearing then being very careful that our o-ring is still in its groove on the cover we can very gently manipulate that one more quick check that everything is working correctly in the kickstart mechanism and we put all the bolts in and snug them up on the clutch cover now it's time to check on the handlebar unit and make sure that your clutch is actually working you can now refill the engine with the gearbox oil the final step is the cooling system and please don't forget there is a bleeder on top of the cylinder head it's a small bolt eight millimeter wrench size with a copper washer that must be opened during the filling process once antifreeze coolant begins to come out of that bleeder hole then you can put the bolt back in and tighten it this gets all the air out of the cylinder area you can see here what it looks like and then don't overfill the radiator it needs a little expansion room at the top you should see the antifreeze in there but not clear to the top that's it and thank you for watching my video best regards this is Jim Snell in the United States of America